So, let's begin with the first word, eros. What is eros in Greek? And what is eros in the scripture? Eros normally is understood as the love of attraction, which is based on feeling. So it is the usual understanding of love. When a man falls in love with a woman, that means there is that feeling, that uh, strong feeling that um, attracts him to the woman or vice versa. So, this is the love that is actually understood by many people especially when they celebrate February 14. It's the love between man and woman and the connection between them is the, that strong feeling of attraction. Now, Eros is something, therefore, that happens to us. Happens because you don't want it, you don't will it, you don't plan it, it just happens. And sometimes you ask, why am I feeling like this? Or some would say, it's like magic. You know? Or according to David Pomeranz, will be coming to Tacloban. Got to believe in magic because it's magic when two people fall in love. You don't know why. It can happen anywhere, anytime. Okay. So, as I said, it's a strong feeling. And it's one that can be so so powerful that one becomes almost helpless hindi na nakakatulog no Ay, hindi na mapakali no hindi na makakain no so, gumising ka siya ang iniisip mo the whole day siya pa rin natulog ka na lang siya pa rin at pati sa inyong panaginip at saka mga nightmares siya pa rin no? <laughs> So, that's the first and lowest form of love, Eros. Now, it's good, actually. Eros is good. Actually, Eros is beautiful. No? Uh, some people think that Eros, because they associate Eros with erotic love, and they think that er erotic love is bad. No, it's good. But it's the lowest form. And it's the most unstable because its basis is purely feeling. But you know what? Feeling comes and goes. No, it's not permanent. I may like to eat ice cream today, but not tomorrow because it depends on one's appetite or gana. Now, higher than Eros is philia. And philia normally is understood as love of mutual understanding, love that is based on vibration, based on uh, as if, no, even if you have met the person only for the first time, you feel so at home. You feel as if the person is someone you have known for a long, long time. You feel like so uh, at peace. And you don't mind spending time and space with that person. It's higher than, uh, it's higher than Eros. Because I said Eros is just feeling. But Philia is more stable because it's based on probably the same vibration, as they say, no? Kabibes or kindred spirit, soulmate, like that. It's more stable. No? In fact, uh, when it comes to loving, it's, it's easy to know who are your kapilya. According, when, well, when we were in high school, we were told that uh, before, physicists used to speak about the three dimensions of matter. No? Length, width, and height. It's like this. Anything that occupies space and has mass has, this, has these three dimensions. But when Einstein came, he added apparently another dimension, the fourth dimension of matter, which is time. So, well, I don't have to understand that, but Einstein apparently says that 
our universe is like a compenetration of space and time. So that's why um, time and space uh, relate with each other in a way that, uh, in a mysterious way, that one affects the other. So when, apparently when you are traveling almost at the speed of light, time goes slowly. No. Um, and it depends also whether inside the vehicle or outside the vehicle. Now in what, in what sense that is true? Since we're also made of matter, we also have bodies, we are not just spirits. So we're also governed by space and time. For example, you know when you like someone in the level of philia, in the level of kindred spirit or soulmate or kavibes, or kaemius because normally these are the people who you would like to spend your space with that's why when you like someone you would like either to bring that person to your space or you will go to his or her space so women normally could sense whether a man is having that interest in hers because normally that man will be Pasangil, pasangil, mag-aagi-agi -agi hain mo. No? Mahurang itong ballpen, mahurang itong papel. No? Mag-aagi-agi -agi yung balay, siguro itong pungunan ng panahon. No? Mas inakatulog ka naman agi didi. No? Oh sorry, nalilipat la ako. Oh nilipat ka, tumalat yung balay, halo yung, oh sorry. Pasinsya na la. No? So, normally, uh, people who have this, I, uh, have this love of philia, they have that strong bond to be to be within each other's space and this is typical of barkadas no people who are, who are magbarkada silang nagsasama-sama sa umaga sa hapon sa gabi at bigyan sila sila pa rin no? barkadahan katropa was a term that young people use today and also these are the people who you would like to spend your time with so it's not only that you spend your space, but also your time. And well, there was one psychologist, I don't know if you will agree with him, I forgot his name, he said, we don't only have physical bodies, we also have the extended bodies. That's why, for example, in a crowd, even if you have not seen your best friend, your kindred spirit, your soulmate, you could sense, parang nandito si ano? But that's a huge crowd, ha? Bakit kasi nagtagpo na yung, yung external body mo sa kanya? Kasi yung external body natin, ma, 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 malawak ang kanyang coverage hanggang justice romantes siguro. Even nandito tayo, pero ang ating external body nandun sa justice, pag nagtagpo yung, yung external body, nasesis mo, bakit nandito siya, no? I don't have you experienced that. Parang gano, no? you could, even a crowd, you could say, and true enough, you, I, I, I felt that you were here. Now, now so totoo pala, dito ka. Okay. So, that's the second kind of love, and it's uh, um, higher, better, it's more stable. That's why friends are friends that we will, have, we will be having until the end. Although they say real friends, friends who will uh, be with us through thick and thin, maximum seven. The rest are just acquaintances, they come and go. But in our life, we will uh, we'll always have these people, so five, seven, who will be with us when we were up or down, bored or excited, young or old. The rest, we will have hundreds of acquaintances but best friends real friends just few okay now after philia the third uh, kind of love is agape now agape is no longer based on feeling it is no longer based on mu it is love based on the will 
So it is built based on the faculty of willing. So it has nothing to do with feeling. It has nothing to do with like. Gusto ko siya. But it's something to do with decision. And that's why it's the most stable and the highest form of loving. Because if Eros is based on feeling and feeling is very, very unstable, it does not last. It depends on the panahon. And Philia, more stable but still not as stable as when we love based on the will. And take note that every time that Jesus speaks of love, he is referring to the third kind, agape. Not on uh, eros, not on philia, but agape. That's why I started this uh, doctrine class with the text from the Gospel of Luke, wherein Jesus reminded us of the command to love God and our neighbor. The question is, why is it that our Lord, or in the scripture, every time that we read that word love in English, it refers to agape? You know what? Of the three forms of loving, eros is the kind of love that is only mentioned twice in the whole Bible and only in the Old Testament. Actually, as I said, eros is a Greek word and many books, if not most of the books, majority of the books of the New Testament were written in Hebrew, not in Greek. But if there are texts in the scripture that uh, qualify the meaning of eros in Greek, there are only two texts that qualify, and both are from the Song of Songs. Specifically, Song of Songs chapter 1, verses 2 to 4, and Song of Songs chapter 7, verses 6 to 8. So these are the only biblical texts in the whole Bible that use love understood as eros. Like the first text that I have mentioned, Song of Songs chapter 1, verses 2 to 4. For your love is more delightful than wine. And then, Song of Songs chapter 7, verses 6 to 8. How beautiful you are. And how pleasant my love with such delights. Here, this, these two texts mention love understood in the Greek language as eros. And these are the only texts of the whole Bible that are within the confines of love understood as based on feeling. That's why... Aside from these two, all the other word, all the other examples, or all the other biblical texts that use the word love, ang ginagamit na ay filia at agape. Never na eros. And in the Old Testament, eros is never used. Now why? We ask, why is it? As I said, eros per se is not bad. It's good. You know what, uh, when I celebrate, whenever I celebrate a wedding, for me, it's a reminder that human love is beautiful. You know, it's not dirty. Unfortunately, some people think that human love is bad you know, because of the abuses you know, that many people are committing when they use love, when they mean something else. No? Um, That's why I usually warn young people. Uh, I don't know if, if uh, this is the proper forum, but anyway, we are all adults here. 
I usually warn young people, especially girls, I usually tell them, no, even our youth here, be careful because men and women don't understand the same thing or don't have the same thing in mind when they think of love. Like for example, no, not all, but many men, young men, especially boys, would use romance for sex. That means they would, they would use boyfriend-girlfriend relationship. But their main target is not the relationship itself, but only sex. Whereas girls or young women, they are willing to use sex for romance. They easily give themselves, hoping that when they have given themselves to the boyfriends, that will lead them to a deeper relationship. This will lead them to a more stable romance. But to her disappointment, while she was expecting that after giving herself to the boyfriend, the relationship will go deeper, the boy is now on his way out. Is that true? Because, hindi sila nagkatugma. And that happens and has happened a lot of times. And, and that explains why some people think that human love is dirty. No, it's bad. But no, human love is beautiful. Just because it is the lowest form of loving, loving based on feeling, it does not mean that human love is dirty, ugly. It is wonderful in itself. That's why the Holy Father, Pope Benedict, would like to remind us that we should use this word correctly.